Hello and welcome to VEX Robotics for Competition, a tutorial for new teams, presented by McCallum Robotics of Austin, Texas, Team 8756. This portion of the tutorial will cover the build overview. So this is a generic VEX Competition robot build. It's a, a form that's been used for years. Uh, it's very common over the last four or five years at least. Uh, it is a U-shaped base. And it has two towers. The towers support a linkage arm, in this case a six bar linkage. You often might see four bars or eight bars. And at the end of the linkage, you've got an intake device. This is a four motor drive base, one motor per wheel. We've got a direct connection to here, and we've got a one to one ratio chain connection to this motor. The only reason for the chain is to move the motor back and away from the intake. We've got four motors on the lift. And this is probably overkill. Uh, this is based off of a toss-up design, so the robot for that design needed to lift. So we had four motors geared uh, seven to one. If you removed Two of these motors, it would probably still lift the linkage just fine, and you could put them into either the drive or the intake system. We found that having uh, direct motor control, one motor to wheel, has been the best system. These motors do not all spin at the same speed. Currently, these are geared to standard gearing so that they are 100 RPM, but they might spin anywhere from 100 to 120 RPM. And if you pair them into a gearbox in particular, and then try to run it at speed. The motors are slightly working against each other and they will burn out uh, overheat faster. This is a lightweight robot. It's built with as few parts as possible and it's built to have uh, as many direct connections as possible, to not have uh, as, uh, too many spacers. Uh, it's often required to have some spacing in order to make the metal thickness work out. Uh, in particular, we're trying to avoid using too many of uh, the aluminum standoffs. Uh, these are set in with some split washers, which is pretty much required, otherwise they will loosen and fall out. So the more um, standoffs you find building into a giant uh, layer cake assembly, you'll find that your robot is in pieces by the end of competition day. Uh, another connection note is that we have, uh, we learned this this year and have been happily using it since, uh, if rather than using axles and axle locks in your pin connections and your linkages, you use long screws and nylocks, it makes a much firmer joint and the nylocks will not loosen over even multiple competition days. The intake system for this is sort of a nonsense intake. It's not intended for any competition, although it will go very tall uh, just with a nod to the fact that Skyrise is going to require height. It has the flag twirler, it has the lift. As I said, we might even be able to get two motors out into the intake system if there was some other need for it. Another important element of this build is that everything is accessible. I can get to each motor very easily. So if I intend to replace this motor, I can get at its motor screws, I can reach around, I can replace the back if I need to, I can re-gear it while it's on the bot if I need to. Same with the uh, tower motors. I can actually even get my wrench onto the tower motor screws, which is a good trick given that it's inside of a uh, gearbox system. The spacing is, like I said, even structural spacing. So these are three inches apart. Uh, this is allowing enough distance, uh, enough width to have this chain in. It is not wide enough to put mechanism wheels inside of. You would have to go a half inch wider. We tend to refer to the VEX pieces in units of a half inch, so these are 35 unit links. The uh, holes are a half inch apart. We try to keep our uh, kit of parts cut in five unit increments so that uh, they remain modular. This is an almost all aluminum build. The only steel piece is uh, this arm piece here. We found that the one that is directly connected to the motors takes the most strain, we've actually bent and even torn an aluminum piece in this uh, similar configuration. 
The next step in the process is going to be wiring. And we'll need to be putting in the cortex probably somewhere in here. And we have to figure out how to place all the parts. So that'll be next. Enjoy some views of the robot spinning. Thank you for watching.